Hello, welcome to the Launching VMX in the AWS Environment Learning Bot. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. After successfully completing this learning by it, you will be able to launch the virtual MX in the Amazon Web Services environment. Juniper Networks has created an Amazon machine image version of the virtual MX platform that you can run inside of an Amazon Web Services virtual private cloud. You can use this VMX instance to route between subnets within your virtual private cloud or in other between virtual private clouds anywhere in the world. There's a 60-day evaluation version of the VMX, and what this allows you to do is run the VMX inside of your virtual private cloud for 60 days without the need to pay for the software license that's normally required to run the virtual MX software. Now, you still have to pay the Amazon Web Services infrastructure charges, but there are, for 60 days, no Juniper Network software licensing payment required. There's a getting started guide to show you how to get the virtual MX up and running inside of the Amazon Web Services environment. And this is the document that I use to learn how to do this myself. It's a very short document, you know, 20 or 30 pages. And you should be able to get your virtual MX up and running right inside of your virtual private cloud. I'm going to connect to the Amazon Web Services environment now and demonstrate the process for getting your virtual MX up and running. To launch your VMX, you will browse to aws.amazon.com. And once you arrive at that site, you will click on the Sign Into the Console button. And this will take you to the login screen. You'll provide your username and provide your password. If you don't already have an account, you have the ability to create one. Define your username and password, provide some credit card and some billing information. But once you get logged in, you'll be placed inside of the Amazon Web Services Management Console. Now, the first thing I want you to realize is that you'll need to select the region that you would like to run your VMX in. And you're going to pick a region in most cases that are closest to your users, closest to your customers. I'm going to select, you know, Ohio. That's This is the the Amazon Web Services data center I would like to spin up my virtual MX in. And so once my region is selected, the first part of this process is creating your virtual private cloud, the network environment that you want to run your virtual MX in. So I'm going to scroll down in the, in the console screen to the networking and content delivery section, and I'm going to choose VPC. I have to define my virtual private cloud, which is defining the network information, the network that I want to run my, my VMX in. I'm going to click on your VPCs in the menu on the left-hand side. I don't have a virtual private cloud defined yet, so I'm starting from scratch. So I'm going to select create virtual private cloud. I'll be required to give it a name, and, and you'll have meetings about this for months, right? What's your naming convention going to be? And then what is a network block that I want to use to assign, you know, create subnets and assign addresses uh, to for the virtual machine instances that I'm going to run in my virtual private cloud environment. And so you'll define a CIDR block. I'm not going to create an IP version 6 one. I don't, I don't need that right now. I'm going to leave the default on the, the tenancy option, and I'm going to say create. So I've created my virtual private cloud. I've created a network block. And now the, the next step would be to create a subnet. So in the menu on the left-hand side, I'll select subnets. I'll create a subnet, give it a name. You'll probably do something like private subnet, DMZ subnet, whatever you want. The subnet needs to be associated with the virtual private cloud that we defined in the previous step. And then I need to specify the CIDR block. And I, I did 10, 0, slash 16. And so I'm going to create a block off of that address range. And now I can, once this subnet is created, I can use addresses from this subnet to assign the interfaces on my virtual MX. So let me, let me create that CIDR block. I've associated it with my virtual private cloud. And now my next step will be to create an internet gateway, right? I've defined my, basically my private network in, for my virtual private cloud. Now I need to create an internet gateway that can be used to reach other destinations like the, the internet. So I'll create my internet gateway. I'll give it a name. 
And now that I have my gateway, I have a route, I need to attach the gateway to my virtual private cloud, very similar to how we, we did the subnet. So I'll select my virtual private cloud. And so now my internet gateway is a routing instance that can route traffic out of my VPC environment. So I'll look at the route table for my internet gateway. There's a routes tab and I'm gonna click edit routes. Now here's my 10 block that I defined for my VPC. That's my local network inside of my virtual private cloud. Now what I wanna do is click add route and I wanna add a default route for any other network traffic. I would like to have that traffic forwarded to my internet gateway. And, and here's the internet gateway that I just defined, right? So this is the routing environment that's been defined inside of my virtual private cloud. So I wanna, I wanna save that route. My next step is, so I've, I've created my virtual cloud, private cloud environment, and now it's time to begin the process of creating my, my virtual MX instance inside of this virtual private cloud. So I'm gonna to go to the services menu, and I'm gonna select EC2 under the compute section. Enterprise Compute Cloud 2 is what EC2 stands for. And this will bring up a different menu. And I wanna scroll in this menu to the network and security section. And the first thing I wanna do here is create a network interface that I can assign to my VMX instance that I'm going to create here in a few seconds. So I click Create Network Interface. I'm gonna create a description for it. This network interface I wanna use for my management interface. So I can give it a description. I want to asso associate it with a subnet. So this interface would receive an address that's valid on the subnet we created, the 10.0.1 uh, subnet. And I also need to assign this interface to a security group. And we'll see the security group referenced again when we go create our VMX instance inside our VPC. And the security group defines what type of connectivity is allowed to this interface, right? You can specify manually the IP address in the 10.0.1 range that you want to assign to this interface. I'm just going to allow the IP address to be auto-assigned. I'm, I'm fine with that right now. So I've defined an interface. Let me go ahead and create that interface. Now that my interface has been created, I want to go create an elastic IP address. You see, this interface is going to be assigned a private IP address in the 10.0.1 range, and, and I want this, this interface to be the management interface. And so to be able to reach this externally, I need to create an elastic IP address. This is a, a public IP address that will be mapped to the private IP address that's assigned to that management interface. And this will allow me to, to manage this platform, the VMX, remotely. So I'm gonna select allocate a new address. And, and I don't have my own public IP address, so I'm gonna select a public address from the pool that Amazon Web Services has. So I'll say allocate. And so this will be the public IP address, the elastic IP address that I will use, that I will you know, secure shell to, for example, to manage my VMX instance once it's up and running. So, so I'm done there. Now, once I've, I've created the elastic IP address, I need to go into actions and then associate this address with a network interface. And, and I want to associate this address with the management network interface that I just created. And so this is what will do the mapping of this public IP address, the 18.28, to the 10.0.1 address that will really be assigned to that VMX management interface, right? And, and, and I can see the private IP address by hitting the dropdown. Remember, I, I allowed the Amazon Web Services to automatically assign the private IP. So this public IP address will be mapped to the private IP address that will be assigned to the VMX instances FXP0 management interface, right? So I've associated the public IP with the network interface that I'm gonna assign to my VMX. Now I wanna scroll back up in this menu and under instances, I'm going to click instances. And this is where I'm going to begin the process of creating a VMX. And so I'm going to click launch instances. And I need to find the 
VMX inside of the Amazon Web Services environment. So in the search bar, I'm going to type VMX and hit enter. And in the Amazon Web Services Marketplace, there are two instances of the VMX available. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on this. And, and there's again, there's, there's two versions. There's the VMX virtual router that's set up as what's called the pay-as-you-go uh, licensing model, which means I, my cost for running this VMX inside of the Amazon Web Services environment is based on how long this thing is running, how much it, it's running. I'm, I'm charged by hour to run this in the Amazon Web Services virtual private cloud. Um, I can also do a, a more fixed fee model with the bring my own license. I already have a license for the virtual MX and then and so that I don't I'm not charged based on how long it's running. There's a you know and you're gonna this is a math formula for your business. How, is this just something you're doing for a demonstration like like I am that I'm gonna do the the pay as you go or is this something no we plan to run this you know consistently for a long period of time and it's just a math formula which is the most cost efficient method. So in this case I'm going to select the VMX uh, virtual router that pays you go. So I say select and it will bring up an information screen for me where I can get a little bit of overview about the VMX router. And, and here's the, the cost structure. I did the pay as you go option. And so you'll see the software column here. Now, remember, I, there's a 60 day trial free. So, so for the first 60 days, I won't be charged the Juniper software licensing fees to run this but I still will be charged the Amazon Web Services infrastructure cost, right? And, and it's set up on an hourly basis, right? So that'll give you an idea kind of how much this is going to cost you to run in the pay-as-you-go uh, model. A, a few more details about the product. If you're interested, you can scroll down. There's some uh, usage instructions, some support, and some licensing information available if, you, if you'd like to browse that. But so I'm going to say continue here. Now, there's a series of different instance types, and, and, and they're associated with the number of CPUs, how much memory, network throughput for your particular instance. And you'll, you'll need to select the instance type that meets your performance re requirements. I'm going to scroll down in this list, and the instance type that, that I want to load is, is a general purpose instance. It's called M4 Extra Large. There, there's four you know, virtual CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM. and and this is the instance type that I want to run in my virtual private cloud. So I'm going to click next down here to configure the detailed settings on this instance. Now in the free pay-as-you-go 60-day trial, I'm allowed to launch one instance of, of the virtual MX. Um, it's associated with the virtual, I'm going to run this in the virtual private cloud that we defined previously. Uh, here's the subnet that we created earlier that, that is available to assign IP addresses to the interfaces on this VMX uh, once it's spun up. I, I can scroll down to the bottom, and there's a network interfaces section. Remember earlier we created a network interface, a management network interface. And so uh, that interface configuration will be assigned to the Ethernet zero interface uh, on the, the VMX once it's spun up and, and, and it's running. So so define these values. Next, we're going to assign some storage to it, right? Um, and, and there's some standard storage settings here. You, you can modify the values, change the, the storage size. I'm just going to accept the defaults here and then click next. And I have, this is an optional setting. You, you can add some tags to this image, this virtual machine instance. And, and, and I always click add tag. And, and this, again, it's not a requirement, uh, but these tags are associated with this image and it helps you, or you can specify things like the owner or the purpose or a name. And this helps you organize if you're going to have multiple, you know, virtual machine instances running inside of your virtual private cloud environment. This helps you, you know, organize them, find them, right? Uh, so I'm just going to add a, a name to my instance. I'm going to click next to configure a security group, right? Previously, we wanted to find the network interface for our, 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 in our virtual private cloud configuration. We associated that interface with a security group. And this, this comes back to this screen. And this is once this instance is up and running, what type of protocols are available for you to connect to this instance? And, and, and you can add rules and 
and, and, and delete rules and modify. So do you want to be able to HTTP or HTTPS into this instance? And, and you know, the different virtual machines that you spin up will have different management requirements. I'm going to uh, just to kind of accept the default. I want to be able to secure shell into this VMX when it's up and running. Uh, and, and so there's a, already a rule defined. Now, uh, look, I'm going to, you wouldn't do this in real life, but this is the who, what source address can secure shell into this VMX when it's up and running. And in, in the real world, you're going to want to specify the IP addresses of your management stations that are allowed to connect into this VMX and using secure shell and manage it. For, for this demo, I'm just going to leave this alone, but that's what this warning message is about. Hey, anybody out there that knows the public IP of this VMX, would at least be able to connect to it, you know, using Secure Shell. I'm going to co uh, click the Review and Launch button. It will come up and ask me again. Hey, there's some other storage options for you. I'm just going to, you can, you can, don't show me this anymore. I'm just going to leave the, the storage options that I chose previously and say Next. And uh, again, just, just some more warnings about, hey, you know, you didn't, that security group's pretty wide open in here and, and you still have to pay the, uh, Amazon Web Service infrastructure charges, but this is kind of a review screen, right? And, and I can see the details. Hey, this is the, the, the VMX. These are your hourly fees. This is the instance type. And, and, and so you can come through here and, and get, you know, review your settings. What, you know, what, hey, what tags, what type of storage did you set? And if you wanted to change anything, there's some, some edit options for you. But I, but I like the values. I like the settings that I picked. So I'm just going to click launch. Now, to once this is up and running, if you want to, you know, connect to this using Secure Shell and, and then manage this instance, you need to authenticate using a public-private key pair, right? And so you need to generate a, a key pair. So I'm going to say create a new key pair. Uh, I'm going to give it a name, something I can remember, right? So. Uh, and then I want to download this to my to my management station. So I'll, I'll click this button. I want to make sure I know where I saved this, right? And I'm just going to save it on my desktop because I'm really good at finding things uh, on my desktop. All right. So let's let's save it, you know. And and so we're good there. All right. And then I'm going to say launch instances. Okay. And this is going to take a few minutes. Okay. So, it, you know, hey, my instance is now launching, and, and, and so there's some more information on the screen about, you know, how to connect to my instance, how to view, you know, my, my charges. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this screen, and you'll see, you'll see a View Instances button. And this will take you to the Instances section of the AWS console. And, and, and now I can see that my VMX1 instance, it's running but it's initializing. And this is the part, it'll take a few minutes. This is like any operating system, it's, you know, it's booting up, right? Here's the, the public IP address that is associated with it. And this is what I would use to secure shell into this platform uh, once it's up and running. And there is a connect button here. Once it's fully initialized, it's, it'll boot up. It'll perform some status checks and you'll, you'll see when it's done, there'll be two of two checks complete and this will let you know that hey this thing's up and this is running and here's my you know my elastic ip the the public ip address that was you know tied into the private ip address that we assigned for the management interface when it is fully up and running you'll click connect and it will bring up some instructions for you uh, explaining how to connect to the vmx instance once it's up and running so in this Learning Byte, we demonstrated how to launch a VMX instance in the Amazon Web Services environment. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.